Yo, Future, so I read this awesome excerpt this morning from an upcoming book by uh, Yuval Noah Harari. Uh, the book is titled Homo Deus. It looks awesome. He's talking about dataism. In a nutshell, dataism is all about kind of interpreting the human species as a single data processing unit as, and kind of looking at the humans as individual chips or transistors in a global CPU. Which is something I've been kind of harping on for many years. Um, it's, it kind of like belittles the human race and belittles what it is to be a homo sapien, but it's an awesome way to interpret what's actually happening. Because from that interpretation, you can look back at the entirety of human history and also our future and kind of interpret what's happening from a data processing standpoint, from basically improving the algorithm of humans. And so the entire history of the human species, its purpose and its meaning has really been about improving the efficiency of this algorithm that is the human species as a single processing unit. And that's an awesome way to interpret things. And so Yuval's basically listed four different methods that we've kind of used over in, in the past and kind of as we move forward to improve the efficiency of this algorithm. It's so obviously just like in a CPU, if you increase the number of transistors you can pack onto a single CPU, you basically increase the processing speed. So now apply that to villages and cities. Obviously a small village of only a thousand people basically only has a thousand brains to produce memes and spread memes and process information, whereas if you look at a city, it potentially has millions of minds processing. We all know most people are moving towards the cities these days primarily because of like jobs and opportunities, but if you look at it from this perspective, really it's because that's where all the transistors are. More transistors means more processing means more memes. You can kind of think of villages and cities as little hive minds that people join. When you move to a city, you're not really moving to a physical place. You're literally joining a brain, a collective intelligence. Yuval's second point is that you want to increase the diversity of these transistors. Obviously, if you have three people who do the exact same thing, their output, their creativity, their, their, the processing is going to be very limited. When you create little dynamic hive minds of even just one or two people or like 10 people, um, and those people are from vastly different backgrounds, skill sets, and interests, you create much more innovation and creativity. Number three, you want to increase the number of connections between these transistors. Um, obviously, the ultimate number that we can achieve right now between humans is 7 billion factorial, which is a fucking large number. And number four is to increase the freedom of flow of information across all these connections. Like, that means zero censorship, absolute constant 24-7 data streams, no impedance. So, lots of transistors, lots of human brains, uh, lots of diversity, lots of connections, and a ton of free flow of information. But I'd actually add a fifth one to this. I think data omniscience, so basically you need to be capturing absolute data granularity, absolutely every piece of data you can possibly capture, record that and share that. So it, should, it just needs to know everything. If you take these five things and apply them to human history, you can kind of see how it's assisted and helped us progress uh, faster. I mean, you look at like the, the evolution of the brain kind of helped us process, we became our own little internal computer. But obviously like a single transistor that's just sitting there, or a single CPU or a single computer that's sitting there that's not networked is pretty useless. So once language evolved, then we're actually able to network our brains together. And so with language, we're able to like flap our meat mouths up and down to push air out of our mouths and network our brains together. So in your village of 100 people, you have 100 transistors in that CPU, a little hive mind of 100 people. Then as we created roads between villages and created trade routes between villages, basically all you're doing is like networking this hive mind with that hive mind, which creates more processing power and more diversity. Then as you connect more and more villages with roads and trade routes, all you're doing is just like networking uh, a greater hive mind, where at this level, the actual village becomes a transistor in a higher order CPU. Then as the processing speed and collective intelligence of these hive minds grew and grew, you created new things like agriculture and economics and politics, and definitely with agriculture, you increased the number of transistors. With the ability to import goods and services from the rest of the hive mind, the collective intelligence of the other networked villages, uh, villages can suddenly become cities because now you can feed a greater population. Then we create the scientific method, and then computers, and now like smartphones, and the whole like telecommunications grid, and so now we're trying to connect everyone on the planet, all 7 billion people, into a single network. This is an inevitable process, one of those technology trends that Kevin Kelly always talks about where it's, it's not really us in control, it's the memes and the teams that are driving this forward, we're just passengers. The Internet of Things will connect all of our devices, but then it goes further, there's this idea of the Internet of all things, so trees, plants, animals, absolutely everything in the universe needs to be connected in one single network. We all have smartphones in our pockets, a lot of us are wearing wearables, uh, next up will be augmented reality displays that we wear every day, those will eventually have portable EEG that can actually monitor our brain activity. And after that, we get into the realm of like neural lace and brain computer interface, where we either have a direct implant through surgery, or you uh, implant something through the jugular vein that eventually just wraps the neuron. I actually think the ultimate thing will be nanobots that go in through the jugular and end up wrapping every individual neuron so that every neuron in our brain is recorded and stimulated individually. Because the cool thing about that stage is then you're basically networking 100 billion neurons in 7 billion or 10 billion brains. So that's a huge CPU. That's so good. And the cool thing about that stage is it actually um, it creates ultimate data granularity because every single neural activity is being recorded and so we're not wasting any packet loss with this pushing air out of our mouth. 
that alone creates a single global processing unit, a single global hive mind, a single global brain of 10 billion times 100 billion transistors and that factorial connection. And that isn't even taking into account the fact that we can merge that, that type of hive mind with all the other machine learning type of hive minds and the rest of the universe together. Stack your thoughts at Future.